You can't work, study, or live freely in the land of your forefathers, and you can't return to the land of your birth. That is the sad predicament facing more than 100,000 people in refugee camps in Nepal who are desperate to return to nearby Bhutan. Beldangi looks like a typical Nepalese village. A midwife advises a client on her pregnancy. And a young man plays football with his friends. But in fact, this is no ordinary village. This is a refugee camp. These people are stateless, with no country they can officially call their own. They can't even set foot beyond the boundaries of the camp without written permission. For us, the life is very limited and we are uh, very restricted. We are not allowed to go outside and work. It's uh, like a uh, life in the jail. Chandra Maya Katiwada and Prem Kadka were both born in Bhutan. But for almost 20 years, both have been blocked from returning to the land of their birth. In Bhutan, Chandra used to work as a qualified midwife. But now she has to share a hut with her family and misses the spacious living she enjoyed in her earlier life. Our house was here and the, my neighbor was so far away. And the, this side also so far, we, we need to shout oh, when we call the neighbors. So it's not like here. Chandra is a descendant of Nepalese people who began migrating to nearby Bhutan over a century ago, when they were recruited to cultivate land there. By the late 1980s, a census showed that the Nepalese population, Hindu by religion, had nearly overtaken Bhutan's traditional Buddhist majority. Amid fears that Buddhist culture would be overwhelmed, the country's former ruler, King Jigme Sigme Wangchuk, imposed tough new citizenship laws on ethnic Nepalese. Their language was banned in school, and many were accused of being illegal immigrants. That's what happened to Chandra's parents. They gave us 15 days notice to vacate our houses. If we did not obey, we would be put in jail. As violence and fear spread, Chandra's parents joined a massive exodus back to Nepal. They were taking all the men and beating them. I feared that my husband would be beaten too. Chandra was completely unaware of all this. She lived many miles from her parents and had no idea they'd left. But six months later, she was confronted by a Bhutanese official who demanded that she leave immediately. He did like, oh, you are still here. You, you should have left the country already. You, you are still here. Nobody told you anything. I thought I, I was lost. So scared. Then a fellow refugee brought Chandra here to Beldangi camp in Nepal, where she was reunited with her family. In all, more than 100,000 ethnic Nepalese became refugees. Most maintain they are legal citizens of Bhutan, a claim denied by Bhutan's Minister of Information, well, uh, Leonpo Kanku Wangchuk. The issue of actually the people in the camps in Nepal is not a typical uh, refugee issue. It's far more uh, complex. It has its genesis in illegal immigration as far as Bhutan is uh, concerned. Meanwhile, their new host country, Nepal, ravaged by its recently ended civil war, also balks at granting them citizenship. Nepal's Under Secretary of Foreign Affairs, Rudra Kumar. Nepal gave them this uh, uh, humanitarian assistance in the hope that they will be going back to their country. Uh, we ourselves have a lot of problems here. And it is not possible for us to to accommodate them in this country. Fifteen rounds of talks between the governments of Nepal and Bhutan have failed to break this impasse. 
But that's done nothing to diminish the refugees' longing to return. They teach their children the national anthem of Bhutan, a country they've never been to. Chandra shares this sense of loss. Very deep inside that I feel that Bhutan is still my country, my birthplace. Uh, I cannot forget it at all. Never. But that birthplace remains a distant dream. And life for refugees in the camp continues to be a struggle. They're totally dependent on massive food supplies trucked in by the World Food Program every month. Faced with the deadlock, many refugees have reluctantly accepted another way out, resettlement in a country in the West. Seven nations, including Canada, Denmark, Australia and the United States, have opened their doors. These refugees have taken language lessons and they've come for a medical checkup before leaving. So far, 60,000 out of 108,000 have signed up to go. Among them is Chandra. Still, we have been trying to go back to Bhutan for so many years, but there, there's no any positive result. So now, the going to third country is the only uh, best option for me. Mm, I think so. Yeah, that's why I'm living to America. For many, Choosing resettlement is a wrenching decision, meaning separation from family and loved ones. Prem, the football enthusiast, is also getting ready to leave for the US. He's been in the camp since the age of four. Not sure what he'll find in his new country, he's taking a bit of his past with him for protection. This is Gornish. We didn't get any Gornish in the US, so we are taking from Nepal. Once in the US, he hopes to create a better future by getting a job in the sports industry. I feel so much sad, but it is what to say right to go US also because I want to make my future right. Uh, I want to play a football as the other people that who play in America. The rest of the family says farewell to Prem and his brother Brin with a Hindu ritual to bless them on their journey. But the good wishes are interrupted by the tears of his mother. And then his sister will be staying behind with her husband. For most of his 24 years, Prem has been confined to a refugee camp. But now he's determined to explore a new life and is on his way. So far, over 10,000 have left the camps. Many thousands more refugees are set to follow him for the promise of finding a state where they can at last become free citizens.